all right uh, very good evening to all of you so welcome to another video on reagent chemistry right now uh, before i move on to the topic uh, that is ddq what exactly it does i would just like to share a small thing with all of you see a reagent can so show thousands of reactions there might be thousands of reactions that are reported uh, for a particular reagent right and it's impossible for us to discuss all the reactions right what we can do is categorize those reactions or understand the mechanism by which they are going that uh, like they are undergoing that particular transformation right so that is more important understanding the mechanism through which uh, they are undergoing that transformation right you cannot possibly you know go through each and every reaction that that particular um, reagent shows right so those of you who are smart would understand this point that is more important to focus on the focus on the mechanistic point of view and obviously like we'll look into the category of reactions like what category of reactions it shows but like i said mechanism is important because like i uh, would show you in the coming slides that how you can use the mechanism to come to the correct answer even if we haven't discussed a particular category of the reactions right so in today's uh, particular um, reagent chemistry we are going to discuss about a very popular reagent that is ddq right that is 2,3 dichloro 5,6 dicyno um, benzoquinone or you can just call it ddq or dichloro dicyno quinone right so there are a lot of reactions it shows uh, like for, for example it shows dehydrogenation reaction which is the most important right so i will be discussing why dehydrogenation is more important and how uh, we can use dehydrogenation to uh, basically resolve each and every question that comes from ddq right then um, okay so the first important thing is that ddq over here is a very powerful oxidant right and one important thing that you should know is that even when you are doing using ddq in practical purposes um you there should it should be used in anhydric anhydrous conditions because if it reacts with water it produces hydrogen cyanide gas which which is very lethal it's very toxic right so you cannot uh, use hydrous conditions or you cannot use um you cannot afford to have uh, you know um, like you can say wet conditions when you are under, when you are doing the reaction with ddq so always the re reaction will be in non polar solvents like dioxane D, uh, you know benzene so those kinds of solvents are used right now what is the mechanism it i told you it's a very powerful oxidant so what it does it, it does is it leads to dehydrogenation right basically uh, what now i'll tell you about the mechanism so basically this ddq over here you can say is hungry for a hydride okay it's hungry for hydride why so because if you um, like if i show it to you over here why is it hungry for hydrides see if you look at the structure over here um, if you add like if you add um, like their sign their sign over here i'll just write rr group over here so if you add hydride let me show it to you with a different color like if i add h minus sorry if i add h minus over here it goes like this this bond migrates over here and this bond migrates over here and finally what do you get you get an aromatic structure that's why it's a very very powerful uh, agent and it is uh, hungry for hydride in general right uh, like the, that is the most common um, reaction it shows so like there are R groups over here it will be like 2 chloro and 2 cyano that won't change and over here we'll have O minus right so basically it's hungry for H minus right so if I look at this reaction that is given over here you can see the solvent is benzene you're adding DDQ so what is going to happen is first of all a hydride from here so there are two hydrogens present so let's say one of the hydrogens over here um, like H minus basically gets transferred to this oxygen over here, right? So what will be generated if I abstract the H minus? I'm saying a hydride is transferring to DDQ. So then a positive charge will be generated. Basically, the carbocation will be generated. So you have to basically uh, uh, do the transfer of hydride from that particular hydrocarbon or that particular carbon where the stabilization of carbocation is the maximum. So this is a benzylic carbocation. You know, benzylic carbocation is very, very stable. And that is why the hydride transfer has taken place from here, right? Once the hydride transfer takes place and over here we get O minus. Now this O minus what it does, there are some hydrogens present over here as well. So this O minus over here will abstract this hydrogen. This bond will migrate like this. And what we'll get is basically we'll get an alkene over here, right? Basically like a double bond will, will be generated. Now since you are adding excess of DDQ, what will happen again? Now, where will the carbocation generate? Let's say if this hydride transfer takes place from here, a allylic carbocation will be generated, right? A allylic carbocation will be generated, but over here we also have, like this carbocation is actually more stable, this allylic carbocation, because it is in, uh, like you can say, it is in, um, what do you call, um, like higher conjugation, right? Um, you can see the stability of carbocations. This is a more stable carbocation because this double bond migrates over here. And then we get a carbocation over here. So this is uh, like long conjugation is taking place. So this carbocation will be more stable. So then again, a hydride will be um, like hydride transfer will take place and then O minus will be generated. 
this O minus will again extract this hydrogen and then this bond will migrate over here and basically aromatization will take place. So this is also a uh, you can say a feature or, or a reaction that DDQ shows that is aromatization but you can see that we can relate it to dehydrogenation right. So this is the mechanism that you need to remember that it is hungry for um, hydride like hydride and because it will generate it will lead to aromaticity so you you all like what you have to see is the stability of the carbon cation, right then you have to also remember that when once that once we saw that this double bond is formed this hydride or dehydrogenation because one hydrogen one hydrogen is eliminated from this carbon and one hydrogenation is one hydrogen is eliminated from this carbon that elim elimination reaction is cis this is very important not many uh, um, like uh, people would be knowing this because it is in research articles that the elimination that uh, this uh, dehydrogenation that happens in DDQ that is a cis elimination right or a sin elimination so please remember this this is very important this could be tested in your CSR examination right and then the transfer of this hydride ion the transfer of this hydride ion that have, that has taken place is the rate determining step when we talk about DDQ reaction so these are the four important points that you need to remember dehydrogenation is the main reaction and uh, the stability of the carbocation you have to take care um, the elimination is cis and the transfer of the hydride ion that is the first step that once the H minus is transferred to the um, DDQ that is the rate determining step all right now let's look at some other transformations that we have now you just use the mechanism so first I told you the hydride transfer will take place so please just use the mechanism over here right now in this case what is happening is we have a nucleophile present in the form of acetic acid right so we have basically OAC present in the solution so once the hydride transfer takes place over here so basically this um, carbocation like one of the hydrogens over here will basically the hydride transfer will take place and we'll get a carbocation over here right and now we have a nucleophile present so what has happened over here is that this nucleophile has attacked this um, positive charge the carbocation and that has got attached over here so instead of getting the dehydrogenated product we have got a uh, um, like the nucleophilic attack on the carbocation so this is like simple thing like you don't need to mug up this reaction you know that there's a nucleophile present the carbocation will be generated that is a rate rate determining step and since if there is a nucleophile present that nucleophile can attack on that carbon don't worry in the examination I don't think they will test you such questions where they will give you alkene also in the options so that you get confused like they won't give you two products where in one product dehydrogenation is taking place and in the other product the nucleophile is attacking they will make it quite clear that one of the two will happen and which one will happen right now this is very interesting over here again see you are adding DDQ just go by the mechanism right so the most stable carbocation over here uh, that will be generated will be when the hydride transfer takes place from here right when this hydrogen over here gets um, transferred you will get a positive charge or carbocation generated over here right now you know that if this oxygen is a nucleophile and if this attacks over here you get a one two three four member ring which is obviously not very stable whereas if this double bond over here migrates right and you get a positive charge over here now you can see one two three four five six we'll get a very stable six membered ring so over here what will happen this double bond will migrate and this oxygen will attack this carbocation over here intramolecular cyclization will take place and we'll get basically a pyran right so you can see over here um, that if you go by the mechanism you don't have to mug up the reactions this is nothing but a coupling reaction right so this is also a broad category of DDQ reactions but you can see just go by the mechanism just do the hydride transfer and then follow it up with your general organic chemistry principles all right now let's look at another reaction over here um so this reaction um is quite um like uh, like again it's a conceptual reaction but if you go by the mechanism it is very simple so basically over here a rearrangement is also taking place so again we will do the same thing over here equivalents are not mentioned so we so we don't need to consider that we need to take it in excess only so first of all um this benzylic uh, so over here there are no hydrogens so first of all this hydrogen will be hydride transfer will take place we'll get a positive charge right um, then the O minus that is present in DDQ like I'll draw the structure uh, once the hydride transfer takes place I'll draw what kind of structure we will get so this is the structure that we'll get once the hydride transfer um, takes place and once the hydride transfer takes place um, O minus is formed this O minus will abstract this hydrogen and dehydrogenation will take place elimination basically will take place of this hydrogen and we'll get a double bond over here right so um, we'll get a double bond over here right now what happens um, now again see this is the hydrogen um, that is present over here so again if I abstract this um, so this is the only proton that can be abstracted right I'm um, sorry the hydride transfer will take place from here and we will get a positive charge over here again right 
um, now what happens is um, see this hydrogen um, like now there is no hydrogen available for elimination. Now you have to see the stability of the carbocation. This is the secondary carbocation, right? But what what if um, like I transfer like if I transfer if I do one to methyl shift if this methyl shifts over here, um, what do I get? Basically, I get a uh, basically if I draw over here, let's say this methyl shifts over here, so I get a um, let me show it to you with a different um, color. This is a tertiary carbocation that we get, which is also uh, stabilized by resonance as well. So this is the most stable carbocation. So that is what has happened. This transfer will take place. And then again, the O minus that this hydrogen, which is present over here, will be abstracted and this double bond will migrate over here. And finally, we'll get this compound. So you can see if you are very well of, aware of the mechanism, there's nothing as such. You don't need to mug up different reactions. Just go by the mechanism and you'll get to the right answer, right? Now, see, this is one more question that was asked in the CSIR examination. I will discuss the first part only of this question. All right. Um, the second part, maybe in some uh, other video, we'll discuss because it is specifically designed for DDQ, right? This particular reaction. Uh, so now it is very clearly mentioned in the examination um, that we are using one equivalent of DDQ in the first step. Now, if you look at the options over here, in three of the options, the D protection of the uh, benzyl ether is taking place, right? In the three of the in three of these steps. In the third step though aromatization is also taking place and you know that if you are using one equivalent of DDQ obviously like both the double bonds cannot be there and then the D protection is also taking place. So more or less if you are if you are using your brains you would think that the third option could not be correct if you are using only just one equivalent of DDQ and in the fourth option they have again done the aromatization over here right. So for this kind of ar aromatization to take place at least you would need two equivalents of DDQ right with one equivalent of DDQ we cannot get this aromatization. So if you would have like if you have, you would have used this logic you would have come to the conclusion that the answer is among A and 2 right 1 or 2. Now the question is that why the D protection is taking place first what what has happened over here. So like I told you um, so this is also a category uh, like a very uh, con you can say um, um, you can say it's a very important reaction of DDQ as well that is D protection like we discussed dehydrogenation coupling reactions um, intramolecular cyclization we discussed right. So this is also one category one broad category of reaction that DDQ shows that is um, D protection of benzyl ethers. So now if in if it comes in the exam and you have not studied about this category how do we um, approach this question. Now let's see over here uh, what choices we have for the hydride transfer. So over here the hydride transfer can take place and we can get a carbocation at this position at this benzylic carbon or this is also a benzylic carbon don't forget this. Now the important factor over here is that OME which is an electron donating group is present which increases the electron density at the ortho and para positions that means this carbocation that is generated over here will have extra stabilization due to the presence of this OME group and that is why the hydride transfer takes place from this end we get a positive charge over here and then what is the mechanism next is actually um, like this is generated and then we do aqueous workup. So we have water in the like after the DDQ has reacted that means now there is no chance of formation of hydrogen cyanide like we discussed in the starting of the video and now this water molecule attacks this um, carbon over here and I'll just show you what we get. Uh, we basically get um, oxygen CH um, this is basically this will just like will further go it will become OH and now what happens this oxygen donates the electrons over here and then this group leaves. So finally we get D protection of the benzyl group right. So this is the mechanism basically right. So we get an aldehyde and along with the aldehyde we get the D protection of the uh, benzyl group right. So this is the mechanism. So you see if you approach it logically you can get to the answer. A similar question was again asked on DDQ in the entrance examination. So this is now they have given the structure of DDQ. They have not given the name and over here also they have given one equivalent. So if you look into the structure, I'm so sorry if the image is a little small, maybe you can um, zoom in a bit. Um, so over here, this is the benzylic group. This is a benzylic group. Um, this is a phenolic group. This is not a benzylic group over here. And similarly, this is an ester present over here. This is also not a benzyl group. Or you can simply look into the like I said don't don't worry about what groups are given just see which is the most uh, feasible hydride transfer from where the most hydride transfer can take place or where the most feasible or most stable carbocation will be generated. So over here it is very clear that if the carbocation is generated at this position it will not be stabilized by any kind of um, you can say any kind of um, 
um, if you can say functional group or any kind of resonance similarly over here there is no chance um, of any stabilization on this bin on this carbocation over here right there is no chance at all for any stabilization so obviously it would be either this group or this group now in, since we are adding only one equivalent so that is why selective deprotection of this um, of this benzyl ether will take place because OME group is present over here so basically selective um, you can say um, deprotection of this benzylic group will take place because this carbocation will be more stable as compared to simple uh, benzylic group basically what what do we have we either have this carbocation but getting generated or we have basically this benzylic carbocation or we have this carbocation that will be generated so among this we know that the second one over here will be more stable and that is why the deprotection is taking place of that part particular um, um you can say um that particular benzyl ether right and if we had been given two equivalents then in that case both of them would have got deprotected so you can see among the all the options this fourth option this is fourth option over here you can see that selectively the deprotection of the benzylic um, group has taken place where the ome was substituted at the para position right so what my whole point is that reagent chemistry is very simple provided you understand the mechanism and you can apply the mechanism well so what I would suggest is um, do as many questions from different books on based on the reagent. First, understand the reagent and then try to apply the uh, the mechanism uh, to do the um, questions on the reagents. Right? There is no point of mugging up because if in the exam they ask you a different question and if you have mugged up what the reagent does, um, so like in the previous question you might have you might go uh, you might go with you know uh, kind of like aromatization or something like that because you have not really understood the mechanism. So that is why I say. Um, understanding the mechanism is very important. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, if it was, um, please give this video a big thumbs up. Um, do not forget to um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you're looking to practice more questions, I would request you to follow uh, my uh, Facebook group that is Reagent Blues over here. Everybody posts questions and answers those questions. So it will be a good practice for you to do some miscellaneous questions as well. Right. Um, so again, I would wish you thank you so much. For watching this video and i really really hope um, that this would be helpful in your preparation thank you hey guys so i'm a verified educator on an academy and along with that i'm also available on the unacademy plus platform where i'm taking live classes along with other educators so in case you're interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the unacademy plus platform using my referral code that is s-e-t-h-i sethi and that will give you 10 percent discount all right and in case you're not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the unacademy for that all you need to do is go to the unacademy website or download the unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is act once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the unacademy platform all right now let's begin with the video